be issues and all that, but I'll give you another one. How's the flat search going? Not ideal. So if the combined monthly income is one thousand pounds, you would enter one zero 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 hash. No. Welcome back to our Airbnb. We left the last video on quite a quite a negative tone, quite a depressing tone. Of it was a cliffhanger. It was a little bit of a cliffhanger. Where are we at? And until a couple of hours ago, we didn't know where we were going to sleep tomorrow. I'll be honest with you. I woke up this morning and thought, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a situation, isn't it? We found somewhere to stay for tomorrow with a friend. So we're going to stay on a sofa. Two days ago, I looked around a flat, looked fine. I was like, yeah. We'll take it, lovely. Unfortunately, that's against the rules. You can't just take a flat, you can't just pay. No, you've got to go through the application process. You've got to um, get references and you've got to have proof of salary and job titles and everything. You might be watching this thinking, that seems really weird, that seems silly. If so, you're spot on. Or you might be watching this thinking, well, no, of course you need references and you need these things. If so, you're actually wrong. You're on the wrong side of history. You are on the wrong side of history. So I fill out all the details in this lovely written email. She comes back to us with some terrible news. In order to proceed, we'll have to put down a holding deposit. It's non-refundable if we change our offer, withdraw from the property, or fail the referencing process. Our references will be legitimate, won't they? They'll be well written. <laughs> How do you know that? Oh, I know they will be. <laughs> I'm not sure if that can go in, you know. <laughs> Very important piece of information. If you think about it in Spanish, it's like ser rather than estar because it's permanent. It's like Finn is always horny. What does it say, Ollie? You might be a if you are blonde, a Tory, a liar, or called Boris, or all four of those. All right, then I'm set up for an interview for a bit of bar work in a football stadium, which sounds quite cool, doesn't it? Pouring drinks for people and serving them, um, taking their money and being a friendly face. I'm very, very calm under pressure, first of all. I enjoy that interaction with people, whether that's with members of the public or with staff and colleagues. I think that went quite well. She said, I passed the interview. So she said, the next thing to do is to book you in for a practical skills assessment. Okay, great, yeah. When is it? Which will be in the summer, in July. It's Wednesday morning and we're going to play a little game. Find a job. I'm going to go into places, Asking if they've got any jobs on, and if they'll have me. A bit of a strange one, do you have any jobs going on? No, then you do take on some temporary stuff for a bit of September. Do you know of any other bookshops in the area that are taking on stuff? Uh, you could try at in the city centre. In the if cafe. You speak, if you speak at the back, yeah, I'm okay. going to do that. I'm only guessing. I know someone yep. left recently. And if ever for the bookstore, first week of October, keep that in your head. Right, okay, that's a while away. Um, what sort of amount of work are you looking for? Um, really anything part time or full time. What is your kind of situation, flexibility wise? Do you have other commitments in terms of like you could only work set days? I'll drop you a little yeah, email down and you can send it. Yeah, again. brilliant. And it's helpful if you just brilliant. put a bit of sort of rationale brilliant. in the body of the email while you want to work for us. Well, nice so, to meet you, Ali. <laughs> nice to meet you too, yeah. And I'll, I'll, um, I'll be in touch. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So that one went much better. So I'll email him my CV and a little cover letter. We'll see where it goes. Let me just give you one or two more points that you need to know. 
it's something like this. I only need a job for money. I don't need it to give me meaning. I don't need it to fill my days and make me busy. I can do that already. And I think that's not a good enough motivation. I think it touches on a lot of the problems that we have going on. A lot of the depression and anxiety that our generation faces. Because we know the system doesn't work. We know that work is just for money at the end of the day. There is so much more to do in life and there are so many more ways to contribute meaningfully to our culture. That's why it's devastating because we'll miss out on so much talent in our generation that is squandered because of the need to be employed and to be earning a wage and to live a very regimented life. That's what everything out there is telling you, whether you try to search for flats or jobs or other things as well. Everything is about living a very, very controlled, regimented life. The values are driven by the market, not by what is objectively good for mankind. There's no point complaining. The important thing is to come up with solutions and alternatives. We want to connect with people who feel the same way as we do on a lot of issues, that can see the problems and are determined to offer and enact solutions. We want to primary the model upon which we all have to suffer. We stood on Roman ruins. I think everything that the Romans achieved. So let's do it. Let's be proud of our culture. Let's fight for it. Let's make it even better than it is and make sure that our greatest days are ahead. Because I don't think anyone thinks that at the moment, actually. I think everyone out there thinks that we're going in completely the wrong direction. It's what it is. It's what it's about. Is this what you get up to when I'm at work? What's wrong with that? Okay, part one was really, really depressing, and we said part two is going to be nice and positive and uplifting. What's this about? Well, it's real life. <sighs> Can we at least show them something fun we've been up to? If you want to. Okay, here we go. We are on our way to the meadow. It's like a peninsula where the river bends round because we've been invited to do some fighting. Um, go and get some <laughs> This group is called... History and Arts. Anyone can... You do shows, don't you? Yeah. Like next week you're at Kenilworth Castle. Yeah, yeah. Something I thought, before we saw it last week, I just thought the reenactment stuff was all for a show. I didn't realise that you're actually going for each other. There is a thing where you can um, have a predetermined winner. We don't do that. Ours right. is you fight and whoever wins wins. Technically the groups we're in are yeah. real groups. Salford was actually a massive group back in the 12th century. This is Salford Heraldry. That is the Manchester Heraldry. And this over here is Lancaster. These were made by, uh, if not us, people in the society. So that isn't how, what it would have been. It would have been planks of wood. Uh, right. But we make them with plywood, bend it over a, um, something called the shield jig, and then we score in to like planks. Mm -hmm. The things you're fighting with. It's like relatively historically accurate for that period. The shape and is, yeah, and, and the, how it looks is right. Um, and what period is that? 12th century. 12th century England, somewhere like this. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Probably be more meadow. You wouldn't have all these uh, high rises. So this is a little bit more scary looking. Now this is of course blunt. It's proper weighty. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so you start off with the little wasters so you can get used to the motions and then you transition onto this. Show us the sword. Yeah, so yeah, it's, very it's darn cool. Arming sword of the period. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wiccan? A Wiccan. Rear and spar. Rear and spar. Gang of four. Gang of four. Ah, well, shit.
available to take your call at the moment, so please leave a message after the tone. Thanks for calling. I'm sorry there's no one available to take your call at the moment, so please leave a message after the tone. Hi, Stephen, this is Mike. How can I help? Do you know what's, uh, what's going on with the application? Application's done. I will send out the moving email shortly. We need to get the cleaners over there. Um, so I'm just waiting for them to get back to me about their availability. Hopefully over the weekend or early, early morning, Tuesday, then we, we, we can get you in. Cheers, bye. Bye. Okay, we came to Manchester more than two months ago and finally we are moving into our own flat. It's taken us up to two weeks of application and reference checks and loads and loads of bureaucracy and finally we're moving in. I haven't been here yet because um, I was away on the day of the viewing so I've been trusting Sebastian that this place is livable. Alright. Alright. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I think that'll do. It's what I would describe eminently fine. What a relief to actually have our own place. All right, leaving one place. This has been, wow, hard. Yeah, to say the least. Now that we're doing it, I feel like, oh yeah, great, good stuff. But to think of how much time has passed, how tough this has been, it feels like one of the biggest challenges of my life. It's a lot of effort to go for, isn't it? I think it's impressive. It is cool. And they had like fake snow all over the floor the other day. It was really quite, it was really quite. Just gonna pop over my bridge. We do, physically and metaphorically. What have we just done? We moved to Manchester! Welcome to the studio.